All right, so election season is basically upon us, and you really want to be in the know about all this cybersecurity stuff and how AI is going to play into it, huh? Well, you came to the right place. We're diving deep into all of that today. Yeah, it's a hot topic, especially with the election right around the corner. And you're right, AI is adding a whole other layer to the conversation. Less than two months ago, actually, which honestly feels like prime time for all that online misinformation to start swirling around. Oh, absolutely. It's like a tidal wave of information and not all of it's accurate. That's for Exactly. Me. So we're here to give you the tools to cut through all that noise yeah. and figure out what's what. And we've got some really fascinating material to dig into. Yeah. What's really interesting about election security is that it's way more than just those voting machines, you know? Right. It's easy to get stuck on the idea of someone hacking into the actual voting machines. But there's so much more to it. Right. It's about safeguarding, like, the whole ecosystem. I'm talking voter registration databases, official websites, even, like, email systems election officials use. That stuff's all vulnerable. It's like thinking your front door is the only way into your house, but you totally forgot about like the windows or even that old doggy door in the back. Exactly. And those weaknesses, they directly affect you as a voter, too. Imagine like your county's voter registration database gets compromised. You show up all ready to vote and boom, your name's just not there. Oh, see, that's the stuff that really makes me nervous. Like instantly I'd be thinking, did I mess up registering or is something shady actually going down? And that's the point. It erodes trust, right? It makes people question the whole system, doubt the legitimacy of the results. Honestly, that's just as powerful as actually changing votes. It's about sowing chaos, making <laughs> people lose faith in the process. Okay, so it's not just about changing the votes themselves. It's about undermining the whole system. Uh -huh. Okay, that's kind of dark. I need something a little more optimistic. It's not all doom and gloom, right? It's got to be ways to protect this stuff. Oh, for sure. And this is where CISA enters the scene. Six. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. They're like the unsung heroes of elections. Okay, tell me more about these unsung heroes. What do they actually do? Well, for starters, they offer a bunch of free resources. Like they have this thing called Cyber Hygiene Services. It's basically a free checkup for your online systems. They scan for vulnerabilities and give you advice on how to strengthen your security. So wait, even like a small business or a nonprofit could use this? That's pretty cool. Yep, exactly. CISO wants to make this stuff accessible to everyone. And for people actually running elections, they've got this thing called the Election Security Toolkit, which gets super specific to the problems election officials deal with. Like what, what kind of challenges are we talking about here? Well, they cover things like phishing attacks, you know, those sneaky emails trying to trick you into giving up sensitive info. Oh, tell me about it. I swear I get like two of those a day now. Some are so good, it's actually scary. Now, imagine being an election official, especially close to a deadline, and your inbox is overflowing. You're way more likely to slip up and click something you shouldn't. So CISA, they offer training on spotting these phishing scams, especially the ones targeting election workers. So it's like cybersecurity training, but specifically tailored for the election world. Makes sense. Exactly. And here's what I find really cool. They even recommend some open source tools anyone can use to fight this stuff. Like there's this antivirus engine, Cisco Columbia V, totally free, that helps filter out malicious emails and downloads. So we're talking free, easy to use tools that anyone, any organization or even just a regular person could use to be safer online. I'm into it. What other cybersecurity villains are out there? Well, ransomware is a big one. Oh, yeah. Ransomware, that's when they hold your data hostage until you pay up, right? Yeah. I've heard horror stories about companies getting hit with that. And imagine that happening to, like, a county's voter registration system. The election's days away and they can't access their own data. Total nightmare. Yeah. Talk about an election integrity meltdown. CISA knows it's a real threat, though. They put out a ton of free resources on how to prevent these attacks, and they really, really push having good backups in place. Backups. It's like that saying, you know, better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, which mm. I'll admit I don't always do a great job of. We've all been there. But when it comes to something as crucial as our elections, those backups could be the thing that saves the day. And then there's DDoS attacks, another way to cause mayhem. DDoS attacks. Remind me what those are again. Those are like digital traffic jams, right? You got it. Like a website gets flooded with so much traffic, it just crashes under the pressure. That's a DDoS attack. Imagine that happening to the website where you go to find your polling place or look up candidate info, especially in those final days before the election. Especially, yeah, when everyone's trying to get that last minute info. Okay, yeah, chaos is the right word for that. Exactly. 
And CISA points out that these attacks can basically make important voter information totally inaccessible, which confuses people and might even stop some from voting at all if they can't get the info they need. So we've got those more like classic cyber attacks, like your phishing and your DDoS attacks. Uh -huh. But then there's this whole other thing looming out there, AI. That's where it starts to feel like we're living in the future. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's true. AI is changing everything so fast, even election security. And it's not all bad, but we got to be aware of the risks for sure. Because it's not LL bad, right? Yeah. I mean, AI could actually be used to make elections better too, right? Oh, absolutely. Like making registration easier, you know, more accessible for voters with disabilities, even streamlining the whole voting process. There's a lot of potential there. Okay, so there's the optimistic view. But then there's the potential for misuse, which honestly kind of freaks me out. Yeah. Like those super realistic fake videos, the deep fakes, that's got to be a major concern when it comes to elections. Well, for sure. Deep fakes are like the perfect example of how AI can be used to mess things up, spread misinformation, make people distrust everything. Imagine a video pops up online that looks like a candidate saying something awful or doing something scandalous. Even if it gets debunked later, the damage is done. Especially with social media, that stuff spreads like wildfire. You know, by the time the truth comes out, most people have already moved on. Exactly. And it's not just deep fakes. We're talking fake news articles, social media posts, even audio recordings that sound so real, it's almost impossible to tell they're fake. All made with AI. So how do we even combat that? It seems like every time we come up with a way to detect it, the technology gets better at hiding it. It's exhausting. It really is a moving target. Honestly, this is where being able to think critically about the media you consume online is more important than ever. We all need to be able to spot manipulation tactics. So it's like we all have to become these super sleuths online, questioning every single thing we see, especially during an election. That's the idea. Don't take anything at face value. Even if it's from a source you usually trust, double check it. See if other reputable sources are saying the same thing. If it sounds too crazy to be true, it probably is. It's a lot to keep track of, but this isn't just about like one piece of fake news or one misleading video, right? This is about protecting the whole idea of democracy, right? 100% free and fair elections. That's the foundation and making sure those elections stay secure in this age of AI. That's going to take everyone being really vigilant and being willing to adapt as things change. Vigilant, not just leaving it to the experts like CISA, but everyone doing their part. Exactly. And part of being vigilant is understanding the legal side of things, too. Like, what are the rules around using AI in politics? We have to figure that out. OK, yeah, let's get into that. You mentioned a Supreme Court case earlier, Linky v. Freed. That one's about government officials blocking people on social media, which seems a little old school compared to AI, to be honest. It might seem that way. But trust me, that case has some big implications for how we think about free speech online in this digital age, especially for politicians. OK, so remind me about this case. What happened? Basically, a group of people they sued a public official because they were blocked from his official Facebook page, saying it violated their First Amendment rights. So even though it was his personal Facebook page, they were saying that because he's a public official and used that page to talk about his work, it was like a public forum. Exactly. And the Supreme Court actually agreed with them. They said blocking people from a public official's social media because of their views, that could be a First Amendment no-no. Wow. OK, so how does this connect back to AI, especially with elections coming up? Think about it as AI gets more and more integrated into how politicians manage their online stuff. It gets tricky. Chatbots answering voters questions, algorithms deciding what content people see, even AI that figures out how to target specific types of voters. It all blurs the line between personal opinion and official action. That's a really good point. Like, say a politician is using AI to run their social media, and that AI automatically blocks anyone who disagrees with them based on certain keywords or whatever. Would that be a violation of free speech? That's exactly the kind of question we're going to have to grapple with more and more as AI gets more sophisticated. It really shows how much we need clear rules and ethical guidelines for using AI in politics. Like we're entering uncharted territory here. We've got this incredibly powerful tool that could either strengthen democracy or completely wreck it. And we're all just trying to figure out what to do with it, you know? It's definitely complex. That's why it's so important to have these conversations, ask the tough questions, explore all sides of the issue. And we have to demand transparency and accountability from our leaders. So we're back, ready to wrap up this deep dive into election security. 
it's kind of wild. We started talking about phishing scams, and now we're like debating the meaning of democracy in the age of AI. It really shows you how fast things are changing and how tech is totally intertwined with our elections now more than ever. And the threats are real. We've got the hackers trying to break in, and now AI, which could be a powerful tool for good, but also has the potential to turn everything upside down. That's why being aware of all this is so important. The more we understand about these new technologies, the better we can protect our elections. Knowledge is power, right? Uh. But it's more than just like understanding how AI works. Right. It's also about how we consume information online. Absolutely. Like we talked about with deepfakes, it's getting harder and harder to tell what's real and what's fake. We've got to be skeptical. So we should go into this election season basically questioning everything we see online. Who made this? What are they trying to get me to believe? Is this even real? Those are the questions to be asking for sure. Don't just trust something because it came from a source you usually agree with. Double check it. Look for other credible sources saying the same thing. And if it feels like clickbait, you know, too good to be true, it probably is. Be your own fact checker. I like it. Yeah. But this all goes back to something bigger, right? This isn't just about protecting ourselves from one fake news article or whatever. This is about protecting democracy itself. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, it's on each of us to safeguard our democracy. It's not just the government's job or some tech expert's job. It's all of us. So you're saying informed citizens are the best line of defense against election interference whether it's some hacker in their basement or some crazy advanced AI. 100%. Understanding the threats, thinking critically about the information we see, demanding our leaders are transparent and accountable. That's how we protect our democracy. This has been a wild ride. We covered so much ground from the nitty gritty of cybersecurity to like the future of democracy and what it even means to be a citizen in this digital age. And remember, the conversation doesn't end when this episode's over. Technology keeps evolving, so the challenges and opportunities facing our elections will evolve too. It's an ongoing conversation we all need to be a part of. So as we head into this election, let's all try to stay informed, engaged, and vigilant right now. Couldn't have said it better myself. The future of our democracy might depend on it. That's a powerful thought to leave you with. This has been The Deep Dive. Thanks for listening.